Welcome to part three of the Templar portrait painting. In this video, we'll get into the Grisaille underpainting. I'd like to share with you a technique that I often employ in my work. It's called Grisaille. It's an oil painting technique in which a composition is constructed completely in tones of gray. It's often used for underpainting since it establishes light values underneath transparent oil glazes. I've used the Grisaille technique for this underpainting, and the final piece is a result of subsequent layers of color glazing. I'll be using the same Grisaille technique for our Templar painting. I've previously painted the background images, some of which are in color, that I may effectively overlap the foreground images. As you can see, I've already completed the castle in the Grisaille technique, and I will now begin the foreground, starting with the chainmail collar. After laying down the darkest shadows, I move on to midtones, and then on to the highlighted areas. Even though the chainmail is one of the most detailed parts of this painting, you'll notice that I'm laying it down very loosely. This allows me to come back after it's dry and to super detail any of the areas in the highlight portion of the chain mail and any areas that are in the shadow, I can push them back and they'll have less detail. In order to achieve realistic form, you'll notice that I'm painting the chain mail in an arcing motion as opposed to lines straight across so that it will conform to the tubular shape of the arm. In this area, you'll see me painting guidelines before painting the chainmail. That's because this area has complex curves that roll very much like an ocean wave, and I want to make sure the chainmail has that same rolling effect. As I progress through painting this pauldron area, you'll see me use a great deal of white to convey a smooth, reflective surface as opposed to the textured surface of the chainmail. When the painting is finished, the area that I'm currently working on will actually be a very colorful plaid tartan. But as with the remainder of the painting, all I'm concerned with right now is light, shadow, and form, knowing that color will come after the grisaille is dried and I apply colored glazes. And here we are with the finished Grisaille underpainting. We have the lights, mids, and darks, which establish form, and are now ready for color glazing. I hope that you've enjoyed this demonstration of the Grisaille underpainting technique. Be sure to tune in as we progress through this painting, and until next time, be well.